Working from home is the new necessity, maybe even the future of many jobs. The University of Chicago recently published a paper on how many jobs can be done at home. Based on the study in the United States, they concluded that 34% of the jobs could be done at home, and those jobs accounted for 44% of all the wages. That is a pretty significant percentage. Given the circumstances, there must be a lot of people scrambling to get their working from home setup going. I am Quantic Dave, and today I am going to give you the essential list of software for working from home. Let's start with the basics. Team chat. Communication is the primary requirement for any functional business. Asynchronous communication is especially important if the business is distributed or many time zones. This requires a team chat app where you can communicate mostly with text messages. In addition, you should be able to share images, diagrams, documents, and more. My favorite tool for this task is Slack. I have been using Slack for the last five years, and it has been working a treat. When you pop open Slack in the morning, you can just click on the All Unread button and see all your new messages in all channels and start replying to them. It is a bliss. After WhatsApp, Slack must have been the most stable chat app I have ever used. Given that Slack's scope is substantially larger than WhatsApp, they are doing a great job. In addition, file, image, and video sharing have been working great. To have additional features like share team whiteboard, task manager, or wikis, you can always use Slack apps from the third parties. On top of apps, you can use bots to automate mundane tasks like creating wiki entries from your chats or even calendar entries. A lot of team chat apps, including Slack, have built-in video conferencing. Almost all chat apps also have very usable free tiers. However, their free tiers have some limitations, like only allowing a limited number of participants in video conferences. Same goes for storage space. For all the memes and cat videos you can share, you only get 5 gigabytes of storage space for free. On the bright side, you can connect your Google Drive to have additional space. Other team chat apps that I can easily recommend are Google Hangouts, Microsoft Teams, and Mattermost. Some of the team chat apps are open source, and some of them allow you to deploy them to your own servers. I recommend investigating these alternatives based on your requirements. However, if you do not have time to do a proper requirement analysis for your team's needs, or your needs are not obvious at first sight, you cannot go wrong with Slack. Video conferencing. As I mentioned, most team chat apps now have adequate video conferencing capabilities. However, if you want a more feature-rich experience, you can try a dedicated video conferencing tool. They have some extra features like ability to host large meetings with more than 10 people, ability to invite third parties like customers to your video meetings, ability to create public broadcasts or webcasts to thousands of people through public conference rooms. These points are a generalization, and it will differ from app to app. I would recommend going with chat apps first, and only introduce a dedicated video conferencing tool when you absolutely have to. As I always say to developers, start with the least amount of tools that you can get the job done with. When using Excel tools become inevitable, keep in mind that you are adding complexity to your setup. So let's start with the current most capable video conferencing service, Zoom. Having used video conferencing tools for more than a decade, I have never used something as stable as Zoom. It just works. Until Zoom, no other service that I used offered a stable experience with 10 plus participants. Some people sounding like they are walking through a walkie-talkie, no video on some others, and terrible echo in most. They just drove me nuts for years. Zoom seems to be handling the massively varied devices and connections of these people quite well. I will not go into the technical details as they will get outdated in no time, but if you are interested, google these magic words, Zoom plus WebRTC. You can read what Zoom is doing behind the scenes and how it uses some technologies differently than others. The alternatives that I can recommend, which will not give you a decade of pain and suffering are Discord, JoinMe, Jitsi, and BlueJeans. If you want to do public broadcast, you can even use YouTube streaming or Twitch. All these have free tiers, so you can make your own comparison. However, if you do not have time to do extensive research, starting with Zoom is a safe bet. 
Finally, I always recommend Googling for current known security issues with any communication tool that you are about to use. Zoom recently had major security issues and others can have them too. Knowing about security issues beforehand can help you to avoid them or avoid that tool entirely. As always, never share confidential information like passwords in chat or video call. Tip: If you are going to install a chat app client or a video app client, do it through your operating system's app store. You will never know if they try to install spyware on your computer while installing the app itself. Installing the app through app store minimizes the chances of getting hit with malware, but still does not eliminate it. You can also use the web client version of these apps in your browser without installing anything, but you will realize that they are a lot less capable than their installable versions. Another tip. I have a video on the most valuable things that you can learn in one hour. If you want to learn something new while you are stuck at home, check it out. You will be amazed at small skills that you can add to your arsenal in a very short amount of time with minimal effort. Office suit, mail, calendar, and file sharing. For an office suit that you can use online with minimal pain, you only have a few choices. Collaborative office suits that I can recommend are restricted to Microsoft Office 365 and Google Suite. There are a massive number of tools that need to be in an office suite, like a mail client, team calendar, file sharing, presentation software, and more. Not every company can deliver all these tools at once. So you are either going to use Microsoft or Google, or choose a collection of smaller tools. Even though online tools are likely to destroy your privacy, for strictly business purposes, I think it is well worth the considerable conveniences that they bring. Most office suits have free tiers if you want to test them out as an individual. But for business purposes, they will roughly set you back $10 a user per month. If you know better alternatives to Microsoft and Google in office space with a similar level of convenience, give me a hint in the comment section below. Project management. I will keep this part simple. If you want a project management tool, Go with Trello. It has everything you need. If you think you need more, you are just adding complexity to your setup. Every company finds excuses to add unnecessary complexity to their workflow via inventing not so essential requirements. But if you really like pain, the other alternatives that I can offer to Trello are Airtable, Asana, Pivotal Tracker, Rike, and Jira. Bonus. GitHub is a unique tool for technical people. You can literally use it for everything. You can share code, you can edit documents collaboratively, you can use it for project management or even for website hosting. It is strictly for technical people, so you will have to do a lot of command line work. But if your team is made up of technical people, I have a great video explaining how I use GitHub on my daily development workflow for all my needs. If you want to see it, the link is in the video description below. Keep it simple. I can list 50 more tools that would all sound essential, but keeping it simple triumphs everything else. Use the least number of tools necessary for your workflow. Keeping it simple will keep you happy and save your sanity. If you also want to keep other people's sanity, give the video a thumbs up so YouTube puts it in the recommended list for more people. If you like the content you see, give me a sub so you will see more of this goodness. And that is it for this guide. I will see you in the next one.